Hi, everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of GTA Fancast with me, Gully. It's been a while. Um, there's been a lot of football played since my last episode, which is obviously a bit of a wrap up of the Christmas period. Um, I've been out on holiday, um, also done some amazing things. So it's been a pretty good time to be a Wolves fan. Um, to kind of sum it up, I mean, the last six games played were third in the form table in the Premier League. No team has scored more goals than us in that time. We've picked up 13 points from a possible 18. We've had a couple of good um, results in the FA Cup as well, as we know. No need to, to, to tell you all about that. And, you know, the bottom line is there's too much stuff to go through with throughout all those games, but there has been one man at the heart of absolutely everything good that we've done. And he's the man that I see as the best player within our squad. Um, maybe not the most important. I think, you know, that might be someone like Mariana Mina at this point in time in terms of ensuring we get results from games. But Mateus Cunha has just been on absolute fire recently. And I think he's showing up to be one of the best attackers in the Premier League. Obviously capped off by a hat-trick at the weekend against Chelsea. But... This wasn't always the case that he was as productive as he's been in recent times. Um, so I'm just going to delve a little bit into what's changed, how Gary O'Neill has managed to get so much productivity out of him, a guy who often looked a little bit shaky in front of goal, um, put in a lot of effort for a little reward at times, um, but has really just kind of been unleashed in recent weeks. Um, there is a specific point in time which I want to kind of draw a line in the sand as to Mateus Cunha's upturn in form from a production perspective. I think he's always, generally speaking, played really well, looked really impressive, especially from the start of this season uh, since Gary O'Neill took over. But kind of even going back into last season in terms of the numbers, Bournemouth, half-time, uh, we were 1-0 down in the game. Uh you know, it was a disappointing uh, point at which, um, you know, during the te during Gary O'Neill's tenure, we'd obviously had a couple of good results recently, recent to that um, in terms of beating Man City. But we needed to to change something slightly, and and you can see here from the numbers that you know Cunha Cunha has transformed um, from a tactical switch, which is basically taking him away from the central striker position and moving him into this kind of left-sided forward role, which he has made his own ever since. Um, like I say, going back into last season, the numbers for goals and assists were really, really disappointing uh, for a guy of his talent. Um, but he's exploded from there, as you can see, 10 goals, six assists ever since um, that half-time switch was made. Everything from a data perspective is up, you know, XG per 90, touches per 90, you can see there, touches in the attacking third per 90, carries into the penalty area, shot creating actions per 90, and key passes per 90 as well. So obvious that he's had benefit uh, from that tactical switch, but what is it about that switch that has really kind of paid dividends? Um, I'm just going to pick up a few touch maps here from games which were before that Bournemouth fixture, which kind of highlight, I think, why uh, Cunha wasn't necessarily suited to playing uh, that kind of number nine role, which we all kind of knew. And we're still in a position where we're obviously trying to source the man who Gary O'Neill wants to take up that position. And, and that will be the kind of next evolution of this team. But for now, we're obviously finding a way to get results, um, you know, with a slight kind of makeshift for front line at times. But it, can, it that can happen because we have guys with the talent of Cunha, the talent of uh, Pedro Neto as well to supplement. Obviously, Juan Chan to come back into it as well. But just to touch on these kind of touch maps here, you can see he's he's not... There's a kind of sparsity to where he's getting involved in the play. Obviously, being the front man, a lot of the time you're making runs towards the ball, you know, having to get involved back to goal, centre-half tight to you. All those kind of things mean you can have problems with what is one of the biggest strengths of Mateus Cunha's game, which is basically running in the direct line towards goal, uh, beating men at will. Um, that shift into a slightly deeper role, um, I would say, and uh, out towards a slightly wider area, took him away from the traffic of the central areas. And you can see and, and a few a few fixtures I've pointed out here as well. Um, sorry, that shouldn't say Aston Villa. That would actually be, uh, I think it's Chelsea. Yeah, I think it's Chelsea at home 
that um, that third one there. So you've got Newcastle, Brentford away, and then Chelsea at home. Just, you know, absolutely he- a hell of a lot more involved, key to everything that we do. You know, it, it's it's probably, you know, simplistic to say getting Matthias Cunha on the ball more often has just allowed him to be, be more productive. But in many ways, that's kind of been the case, and the team has benefited from that as well. Um, just picked out kind of when I was watching a load of clips, um, an ideal scenario that you'd like to see Cunha in. He's actually received a ball here. This is against Tottenham um, at home. Obviously, we won the game very late, but he's received the ball here in that kind of left half space almost uh, near the halfway line. And he's turned his man. He's got runners ahead of him. He can carry the ball as far as he wants. You know, obviously, um, it's a bit of magic that's brought him into that situation. It's not the kind of thing that, um, you know, any player would would be able to just turn Eric Dyer in that way. Um, But this is basically, we want him in this kind of scenario as often as possible um, in, in every single game. And that's where we'll get productivity. Um, just to kind of touch on some of the themes that I think have run through from having him in a slightly deeper position. Without Ryan Aitnuri, which obviously we've 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 had to to contend with in recent weeks, um we struggle to build up down the left hand side. Um Totti and uh, Matt Doherty, bless him, they're they're really kind of useful players. Totti especially has is, is, is come into his own in that left centre-back spot, but can be left wanting a little bit with the ball at times. Um, so Mateus Cunha being there to provide support, he's dropped really, really deep. He, I, I sit quite close to that part of the pitch um, at games and him coming so deep in front of us, it, it, it's quite obvious when you see that he's able to hold the ball and and kind of contend with a fullback, maybe not a centre half in terms of the physicality, but he's quite comfortable holding onto the ball in those tighter spaces, turning out of pressure and then finding a pass. And you can see a couple of situations here against Brentford and then against Brighton where we've been able to get out of being in quite tight areas within the corner of the pitch and, and um, his ability to carry the ball has helped there. Obviously, we know his ability to carry the ball is you know, has been evident throughout the season, but I think just being in that slightly wider space has allowed him more opportunities to do this. Um, instance here for again in, against Newcastle where he carried it from the halfway line into the penalty area and got a shot off a goal. Second one here against Arsenal as well. Particularly impressed with that one because it was Declan Rice who's trying to combat him, which um, is no mean feat. Um, and then obviously the way he won the penalty from a very wide position against a fullback um, in Malo Gusto on Sunday, just gone against Chelsea, shows exactly all the characteristics that we love about him. Um, but being in that wider position obviously gives him that scope to to carry the ball more often. Um, chance creation as well. I think this is a part of his game which hasn't necessarily been evident up until probably the last 10, 12 games, I'd say. But because he isn't necessarily in the penalty area, the onus is obviously on him to provide a little bit more. We saw it, I think, probably one of the first instances here was obviously that assist for the the wonderful Pablo Sarabia goal uh, to equalise against Tottenham. Um, but he finds himself in this kind of slot quite often where he's able to whip a ball in, kind of in swinging into the penalty area. Um, another situation here where he played in Huang and uh, Jordan Pickford made a really good save for Everton um, on the break there as well. Um, yeah, a couple of other uh, situations. He obviously assisted Pedro Neto's equaliser for against Man United. And then the other one is uh, is in the cup game against Brentford at home, where, again, he's in that kind of left half space and he whips a ball in towards the back post. Nelson Semedo makes a good run and he's able to get on the end of it and then score off that rebound. Um, and not, there's an obvious um, increased goal threat, right? Gary O'Neill has spoken many, many times about how he wants to get more productivity and how he's coaching Mateus Cunha. They obviously have a very good relationship, um, player to manager, and they're they're constantly discussing things. And one of the things that he's wanted to make sure that Cunha does is get more goals because he has the talent to to do it. Now, all of the situations I've highlighted here, I think the key bit is that there are bodies in the box which support the runs that Cunha is making. In the first one, Huang occupying a centre-half allows that centre off to be uh, to, to be taken away from the space that 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 Cunha wants to move into to finish against Bournemouth. That's where kind of this productivity all kicked off. Like I say, similar kind of situation against uh, not a good Forest at home, where he's coming onto a cut back from Sarabia. Um, again, if he's the number nine and he's the one that you're expecting to make a near post run, 
or beat a centre half in the air. You know, it's not really his game. So getting other bodies into the box to occupy centre backs helped with the goal against Fulham, um, as an example, where Belgar managed to clip on up to the back post and he got a free header. Um, and again, kind of the, the the goal against Everton, I think, is very much about his desire to get on the end of something. Um, and I think that's something that, that Gary O'Neill has tried to instill in him as much as possible. You've got to make sure you make the run. If you don't make the run, and there was an instance against Brighton where he didn't hit the back post hard enough to to actually get on the end of a, a ball that was flashed across the goal, but he got his rewards in that situation there. So that should have kind of informed his decision-making in that, in that instance as well um, when you had the chance against Brighton. But kind of cap it off here with the with one of his uh, hat-trick goals again Pedro Neto once he's getting down that right flank you need to be a either making a run far post which Ryan ain't knew he does there or that second line I've spoken about this um previously with Huang as well you need a second line of attack whether it be a ball gets flashed across and there's a, a clearance that lands at your feet or you need to offer that cutback option the two runners always um, increases that opportunity to score a goal. And couldn't you come on to that ball was um, was obviously a really good opportunity. And uh, and he finished it with a plum. But I genuinely think Mateus Cunha is on his way to be to showing that he's basically the most talented player we've had at Wolves. You know, it's been certainly um, in in recent years actually. And I know we've had a hell of a lot of talented players in that time, but the kids basically got it all. Um, He's obviously enjoying his football, which then leads on to all the other things that, that I've kind of evidenced here. But he just seems to be able to add things to his game consistently now with the work, the help of the coach, with the help of his teammates as well. Huang coming into into the fold now as well should continue that level of productivity, I think. I don't think there's any harm there. And I think the need for a more physical number nine um, who's going to run channels for us, who's going to fight off centre-halves and hold the ball in the in the opposition half more often, will again add a dimension next season now, obviously, for Cunha to be even more productive. Um, so, you know, really, really looking forward to how he develops at this club um, in a Wolves shirt and hopefully lead us on to bigger and better things um, as, uh, as our main man. 